But particularly for ARC, um, they're incredibly useful. There are a number of tools, um, well, there are two tools. Um, one of them is ArcStat, written by a fellow at Sun that's fantastic, allows you to see what's happening in the Arc real time, things going in and out. Um, another tool that I wrote is uh, called Arc Summary, which will go through, look at all the, the, uh, the Arc case stats and try and give you an idea of exactly how the Arc has been used in an effort to try and find uh, where the efficiencies or inefficiencies may lie. It gives you a good idea of, of whether, where your mix of I.O. is coming from, direct I.O., uh, what, sorry, not direct dial. Uh, whether you're going direct to disk or whether you're prefetching and things like this. More case stats hopefully are coming, um, but this is always the case. We always want more observability points, right? More, 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 more. Um, it is extremely observable, but you know, more is always better. Um, and um, particularly when you look, at, when you start getting observability in case stats, you want to look, there are a whole variety of I.O. related case stats. You see them in, in the VFS layer, the virtual file system layer. You also see them in, in ARC. And you want to look at a variety of these different types of parameters. Never just look at one statistic and decide that that's, that's the right one. So here's an example of some of the ARC case stats with these raw values. Now, if you don't have a lot of experience with case stats or you don't use them, the one thing you need to remember is, is that most, not all, but most of the case stats uh, in Solaris are cumulative since boot. So they're constantly incrementing, right? Um, so in a lot of these cases, you need to be a little intelligent. You need to break these down by the number of seconds the system has been booted in order to get you know, per second averages and things like this. Um, but some fantastic uh, information here. We keep getting more and more all the time. Um, a couple of months ago, we got uh, all the stuff out of L2 Arc, which is layer two Arc that's using SSDs to extend the Arc. Another observability tools, MDB, the modular debugger. This is the Solaris kernel debugger that's provided with the operating system. It provides a lot of very useful features, and it's not necessarily as difficult as you think. Um, ZFS.C, uh, most of that code actually is MDB macros and walkers and things like that. And it's probably the best documented section of uh, ZFS code in general. ZFS is pretty well, pretty well documented, but that section's really nice. And will give you a lot of different um, uh, macros that you can use to observe what's going on. Um, there's, if there's just one you know about, um, it would be this colon colon ZFS underscore params. That'll go and actually print out all the ZFS tunables. The ones you know about and the ones you don't. That's a fantastic tool to use, especially if you only have heard about one or two tunables in some blog entry, probably mine, and, and you're thinking, oh great, okay, there's three tunables for ZFS. Well, there's lots more, and depending on what release you're running, you know, they may have, you may have some tunables or you may not. So running that will show all of them to you and give you a good basis of, of what you can really mess with. Um, there are a number of different walkers. Walkers are fantastic things for walking data structures and stuff uh, in, in MDB. Um, they're most handy when you're doing post-mortem um, and, and forensic stuff, you know. Um, you know, you're walk anybody watch Dr. G? There's no Dr. G lovers, man. You guys gotta watch Discovery Health. It's a great show to watch. It makes you wanna just like crash systems just to go through and walk them. Um, there's a great tool called Solaris Cat. Scat, seriously, <laughs> names this stuff, man. <laughs> right? I mean, it's just, I feel weird every time I say it. Um, Solaris Cat is an alternative uh, debugger intended specifically for forensics. Um, and it has a number of, of wrappers for ZFS. It'll do a lot of work for you. If you've, ne if you've ever needed to do a core dump analysis of a failed system and you got in there with MDB and you just kind of scratched your head, well, I don't, I really don't know. Um, try Solaris Cat. As soon as you open it on the core file, it'll actually do an analysis on you. And a lot of times, Solaris Cat will tell you what happened just after you opened it. Like you can just run it, it does the analysis, and then you just quit. So it's a fantastic tool if you've never used it. Um, here's a look at uh, MDB. MDB-K will let you look at the running kernel and running the ZFS params. And you can see some of the tunables here. Arc reduced DNLC percent, ZFS arc max, min. Uh, shrink to shift. By the way, any, any tunable with shift in it 
don't really touch. That's a bit mask, and you probably don't want to mess with it. Um, but there's a lot of really great tunables that we can play with. And then D-Trace, of course, the mother of all observability tools. Um, I personally live by the FBT provider. Um, if you've played around with, Z, with D-Trace at all, you play with some of the, the one-liners and stuff, you've probably played around um, with a syscall provider um, uh, or some of the, the VM providers, right? Um, most people tend to shy away from D-Trace unless they're dealing with like one-liners that they find in somebody's blog probably. Right? And um, it's really not as tough as you think. And if you're just running one-liners, you're not appreciating the beauty of D-Trace. The beauty of D-Trace is not just spitting out a list of PIDs, and that's what most people want, right? You run VM stat, and you see a number, and it looks a little too high, and you want to ask the one question that all sysadmins commonly want the answer to, who's doing it? Who made that value higher? Of all the processes I have, which one's doing it? Especially if it's a multi-user environment, and you're not entirely sure who's doing it. Um, and it's great for doing that, but you're really limiting yourself. D-Trace is all about asking questions. And the thing about any question is it prompts another question. And that answer prompts another question. And this continues on and on and on until eventually you either die or get bored or so deep in it you can't even remember where you were. Right? And this is true of life. Um, so, we can, with, with the FBT provided, this is the function boundary tracing, it allows us, it's the most powerful of all the D-Trace providers because it allows us to watch entry and exit of every single function inside the kernel. If you actually run it without specifying limitations, it will actually show you in real time every single function going in and out of the kernel. And it's a fascinating thing to do and I totally recommend that you do it. Um, you can only do it for about five seconds. In that five seconds, you'll probably produce about a 20 gig text file from the dump. But it will be the most amazing week of your life going through that 20 gig text file. <laughs> and you'll, you'll, you'll learn all sorts of things that you've always wanted to know the answer to. When we limit this down to ZFS, we can see, we can pick and pull particular ZFS functions in the code and look at things coming in, going out, what's the flow. Um, and it gets really powerful and you'll lose your, your life just going through ZFS code and then going into D-Trace and watching it go in and out, seeing how it works. You can see code flows come back in and out. Um, it's most powerful when used for timing and aggregation and allowing, allowing you to kind of learn the, the, the stack and, and the code flow. Um, and I will mention there is a provider called FSSAT. It's not documented. Um, if you've ever used the Solaris FSSAT command line tool. It provides you almost all that information which is out of the VFS layer. It's a fantastic one, but I think there was something wrong with it because it's there, but they never documented it. Like there was one thing they wanted to do and it didn't do it and they just decided we just won't tell anyone about it. So if you're feeling adventurous, you know, go for it. One other tool, this isn't necessarily an observability tool uh, in, in, in the, the, the first rank, but uh, ZDB, the ZFS debugger. If there was an FSCK for ZFS, this would be it. It allows you to examine and in some cases correct on disk structures. Um, it can help you find and fix issues. It really is nice because it will give you this complete breakdown and count of all objects. And, and ZFS it really is just a collection of different types of objects that are interrelated. Um, and it can break all this down very nicely for you and give you an idea of where we're going. It's extremely interesting. And it's, it's yet another one of these tools you can kind of lose your life to because it's just so cool and fun to play. Um, but it's very rarely actually handy. When a real problem arises and you think, well, I, I don't know what it's doing. Maybe I should use ZDB. You're, you don't need it. Um, there is one use that people really like for it, and this is where it gets really fun, is that you can recover deleted files. <laughs> 